Hello folks, today we're going to be covering the find maximum index product problem on HackerRank. Uh, this is medium difficulty and as usual I'll be going over the problem, give you some time to do it on your own, and then covering my solution. Here we go. You're given a list of n numbers uh, and for each element in, at position i, going from 1 to n, uh, we define the left i and the right i uh, basically like functions as uh, left i meaning the closest index such that the value at that index is greater than the value at the current index. Uh, if no such value exists, then the left i is known as zero. Uh, the same thing for the right, except for the right hand side. This sounds confusing. I'm going to give you an example in a second. Uh, and the idea is that we define the index product i as the left i times the right i. And we need to find the maximum index product among all i's. Okay, so this sounds unnecessarily confusing. Here is what this means. So imagine if you have this, if you're giving this input list, um, and I'm going to be noting that they're using the index as, uh, as if it's starting from one. So just keep that in mind. It's not on a zero scale. And you're just going basically uh, one value at a time. So let's see what that looks like. So if we were to start, so we're going to start at the first index, index one in this case, we have the value three. And we look for anything on the left, which there are none. So we're going to say that that value is a zero. And the value that is on the right, we're looking for the closest value that is greater than the current one. So the so if we go from left to right, starting from three, we know that eight is like the first one it hits. That's the value. And we would, we'll take the index two as what we're actually multiplying. So we're, we're not multiplying the number or the value, we're multiplying the indexes together, indices. Uh, and so here the result is zero because the left is zero while the right is a two. Uh, so we'll move down to the eight. So the next value is eight. There is no value on the left that's larger than eight. So again, that's a zero on that side. And the greatest value on the right side is this nine. But again, we're taking the index, which is a five. So our result is zero times five for that. If we get to the next one, the four, we see the closest value that's higher than four is the eight. So we get uh, a two index and on the right hand side is the nine. So we grab the five index. So, so that's two times five is 10. So now we have, we finally have a solution that's like not zero. Uh, if we move on to the two, we notice that on the left, the, two, the four is actually greater. So we grab index three and on the right is five. So uh, three times five is 15. So, so far that's actually the greatest one that we've seen. And you can go through all the examples. So in this case, our greatest value, our greatest uh, index product would be this one, the 15. So that's the idea. Um, so I'll give you some time to go over this uh, and then I'll cover my solution. All right, welcome back folks. Uh, my solution is going to involve a simple data structure known as a stack. Uh, if you're not familiar, it's just uh, basically as if you were to have a pile of books and you put a new book on the stack, then the next time you wanna get a book, you would grab the top one. Uh, so this is a last in first out data structure. Uh, and I there are many ways of implementing this, so I will show you mine. I'm just gonna kind of keep it abstract at this point. Um, but here is the idea we're going to loop through the input list one time and capture the max index uh, from left to right. And so I'm going to keep track of a few things here. Um, so first I have my input list in the center here. And uh, on top of that, I have a another list of the same length, which is gonna keep track of the left side closest max index. So that sounds like it's a mouthful, but you know, I think when, when we get through it, you'll get an understanding. I'm also going to keep track on the left here, the left stack, which is going to refer to the indices themselves. You might wonder like, why not keep track of the values? The convenient thing here is that because we have the input list, we could just keep track of the index and then just do a quick lookup, which is constant time. So there's no real issue there. So the idea is we're going to start with uh, our first value. So three or index zero, and we're going to check our stack. And right now the stack is empty. So we know there's no value larger than three to the left of the three. And that's what that's saying. The empty stack is basically saying that. So the index, max index here is there's none. So the problem tells us that that's basically meaning a zero. So that's what I'm gonna put here. So this zero is referring to, if I go down to my example here, that's basically referring to this zero here, the left max 
Um, we'll also need to compute the right max, but that's a whole other loop by itself. So I'm going to just keep track of one at a time. So um, as we transition from the three and we go to the next index, the eight or eight uh, index one, uh, we should capture this. This last, the last value and index are uh, what we just saw. So we should definitely add that to the stack. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to add not the value, but just the index. All right. So eight will look at the stack and basically says, okay, the top value, what are you? Well, it's index zero. So we do a lookup and we say, oh, the value is three. Well, that's not larger than eight. So what we do is we pop it off the top because it doesn't matter. It's not larger than eight. We can get rid of it from consideration. And now the stack is empty. So we know there's no value to the left of eight. That's larger. We can put zero here. Again, we're moving to from eight to four. I'm going to add uh, the index one, which is referring to the position with the eight. And four can say, okay, stack, what's the value uh, at the top? That's index one or value eight. Eight is larger than four. I know with confidence that this index is what I'm looking for because it's the closest thing. Because again, you're keeping track of the closest value uh, on top of the stack. So what I would put here, you might think I would put a one here which would be preferable, um, but they're using this indexing with a uh, starting at one to actually do the calculation. So this value here, uh, you can do that. You can either add the one now or later, but basically because this is at index one, we just add one more to it. Uh, again, this is just because the way they do calculations. If I go to the, my, my right here, the, this two here, because the way they do the index, the value index, index, indexing, it starts at one. So we need to make sure that we're not taking the literal index, but we're doing one plus that. Uh, so that's why that's the value I'm going to put in here. It is the uh, two. I'm moving from four to two. And, and again, we're moving where we just we just encountered four. So we should we should add that index there. Index two, which is referring to this four. Two is going to look at the stack and say, OK, stack, what's the closest thing? And on top, we see the four index two, but that's the four. That's largest. That's larger than two. So we can say that's what we add here. Uh, again, we don't add the two. We add two plus one. So here we're going to add three. Then we go from two to nine, keeping track of what we just saw. So we add three to the top of that stack. Two is the last thing we saw. Uh, nine is going to say, OK, you're two. You're not larger. So we can pop you off the stack. Index two or the four, you're not larger. Pop you off the stack index one or eight, you're not larger, pop you up the stack. I now have an empty stack. There is no value to the left of nine that is larger than nine. So we add a zero here. Then we transition from nine to eight. Of course, we add the nine, which is index four. Eight says top of stack, uh, index four or nine, you're larger, I can take you. Four plus one is five, so I'll put five in there. And then I transition from eight to one, keeping that on top of the stack. And that is gonna be uh, index five. Index five, eight is larger than one, so I can add that to my stack, which is five plus one or six. So now here I've constructed my left side max indices using this idea of a stack. I've looped through it one time, so it's big O of n, and uh, the values I'm referring to, if I go to my example from before, it's basically like this left this left number here, the left hand side. So that's zero, zero, two, three. So if we should see the same thing over here. 0, 0, 2, 3. So, you know, it's following that logic. Uh, so that's the left-hand side. We got that. Of course, we need to do the same thing for the right-hand side. Same issue is at play here. So everything is basically the same. Now I have a right stack I'm going to be using. And I'm going to have another list here called the right side closest max indices. Um, but I gotta, I'm going to start from the right-hand side. So I'm going kind of backwards through my input list. Uh, but let's see what that looks like. Um, we have the 1. Uh, index six, and we know there's nothing, the stack is empty at this point. So we know there's nothing to the right of one that is larger than one. So we can say zero for that. We transition here. We have a stack here. This is going to say, we're, uh, while we transition, we add the, the six index to that, which is referring to the one. Eight looks at the stack, checks the, the index six or value one, not larger. It pops it off and it's now empty. So we can say there's no value larger than eight to the right of eight. So that's a zero. Transition here. We get we add five to that. That's referring to the eight. Uh, whenever we transition, nine looks at the eight and says, "Okay, you're not larger. Pop you off. You're empty again." We have a zero. 
nine comes in, nine gets added as index four, two looks to the top to the top of the stack, four referring to the nine is larger. We are confident that's what we want. We put four plus one or five in there. Then we transition from four two to four. We add the index at two, which is a number three. We have now constructed two two lists here that we can now multiply together effectively. So the first value in max this left side max indices, we multiply that by this this one two. So zero times two, zero times three, two times five, three times five, and eventually we'll just keep a running calculation of that product. And again, that's exactly what we did here basically. So we have zero times two, zero times five. 2 times 5, 3 times 5. All right, let's look at this in the code. All right, so my coded solution has just having a class that is a stack. Um, I think I think it's helpful to abstract that because there are different ways of implementing this. So as long as you have basically the same methods and whatnot, then it doesn't really matter how you implement it. And I have my solution, uh, so I'll show that after I do the stack. Okay, so the stack is a class. It's a fairly basic data structure. In this implementation, I'm just wrapping this around a list. You can also just have like a node structure as well. That's totally fine. Again, however you want to implement it, it is up to you. Um, here, I'll just uh, initially initialize it with a internal stack that is basically an empty list. I'm going to have a few methods here. The is empty method just returns true if the stack is empty. Uh, or another way of saying that is if the length of the list is zero. Same thing. Um, I have a push method which takes a value and it just inserts that value on top of the stack. So at index zero. I'm going to consider the zero index to be this top of my stack. Um, I can, I have a method here called top. Uh, you might also hear this referred to as a peak, or just looking at the top without any any modifications. Just what is the top value? And here I just return the top of the stack with index zero. Uh, the pop method is just removing the top value from the stack. And here I have pop zero, which is the zero index. This is the main functionality for a stack. Uh, again, however you implement it is up to you. Uh, and I'll be using that in my solution. So here's my solution. I'm going to first keep a running max index product. This will effectively be the answer in the end. I will then have my best left indices, which if I go back to my example, it is referring to this list up here, basically. Like my left closest max indices, I just I want to keep track of that. Okay, so that's that. Uh, here is my stack, which is my left to right stack. I'll also need to keep track of a right to left stack. That'll be later. Um, but here I am looping through my input list once. I'm using enumerate to break up the index with the value. The i is the index, the value is val. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is doing that check on the stack. So right away, I want to say, okay, what is the topmost value? Is it larger than mine? If it's not, I want to pop off the stack until it is true. Either it's empty or until I have a value that's larger than mine. Um, and so that's what this while loop is doing. So while the stack is not empty and the top of the stack. So remember, the top of the stack is referring to the index. So I'm I'm actually uh, looking at the top, but that's the index. I'm going to pop that index into my list to do a lookup on the actual value. So that's why I have list square bracket and my stack dot top, which is referring to the top of the list. Uh, and as long as that's less than or equal to my value, I know that this is not larger than my value. So I should pop off the top. And that's what I'm doing here. My stack dot pop. And this while loop will just keep going until it's either empty or until there's a value that is larger than my current value at the top. So here's the logic here. If it's not empty, then I know there is a value that's larger. And that's the one I want to keep. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm uh, using my the best left indices list at index i. I'm going to give that the top of my stack. And if you recall, I need a plus one on top of that. And so that's what I'm storing at that in that list. And of course, once I'm done, I should always keep track of that current value in consideration because we just we just uh, we're just encountering it. So that should be on top of the stack for sure. Uh, so our left to right stack, we're pushing the i, the current i. And that is going through it one time, keeping track of the left to right max index. I will now also do the same thing backwards, basically, for the right side index. So here I have my, my right to left stack that I'm creating here. Um, here's one caveat that's a little different from how I explained it. And if I go back. So when I was explaining it, I had a running 
right side closest max index as like its own list, which you can certainly do. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, there's just a minor efficiency where the fact is I'm going through this current index when I'm passing through it. So what I'm going to do in my code is I'm just going to do the lookup and calculation right here and now because uh, I have access to everything I need and that's there's no need to like go through the, the list again. So what does that look like? So here I'm looping through my um, my my list again. I'm having a slightly different in implementation. I'm not using enumerate because I actually want to go backwards. So here I'm using like a range with the left, the length of it, minus one and a bunch of minus, minus ones here. This is just me looping backwards. And here I have the val as the list with the index. So I'm just uh, I'm effectively recreating the i and val that I was doing with the enumerate. Same logic applies. I'm looping um, un until it's either empty or until the value on top is the best that it can be. And here is where the efficiency comes in. If, if it's not empty, then I know I have a valid max value. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to just calculate the product right here and now because I'm looping through it. You know, this is, this is where all the information is, exists. So I'm going to grab my best left index at the current I, which will be, so if I go back here, that's basically going to be like one of these numbers like this one or the five or the six, one of these. And I'm going to grab the right to left stack. Again, the top of that plus the one. So I make sure that I calculate that properly. And I just do the multiplication right here and now. And here is my products, the left best for this index and the right best for this index is right here. All the information exists here. And I will just reassign the max index product to the max between the current max and this new product that I'm put, pulling in. So, and of course, at the end of that, I will make sure to add the current index to the right to left stack. And so by the end of this, I'm looping through this list once in reverse, and then once um, going right to left to right. And so I'm actually going through the list twice, and that's it. And I can return the max product right then and there. Uh, so let's run some code. And that is done. And let's submit some code. And it gets done fairly quickly. So uh, so the, the efficiency here, I think, comes in the fact that obviously you're using a stack, so that's one big thing. But also like the fact that I'm not looping through it like three or more times. It's just like twice. That's, I, I think, as efficient as I can get it right now. Uh, so let's look at the time complexity. So this is definitely big O of n doing the first loop. The uh, second loop, this is, again, a big O of n. And that's not uh, nested, so this is, in the end, big O of n. Like, it's like 2n, which is equals to big O of n. All right, folks, so if this is the kind of content you enjoy, uh, please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, all the good things, and I will see you next time. Take care.